everyone. We are team number 21 of 72. The project that we were tasked with completing was scaling up the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. The team is made up of myself, Marissa Khan Minister, Cameron Malloy, Abby Severance, and Mary Paris. We are all chemical engineers and we are very excited to share with you what process we have developed. I'll quickly go over the main points on our poster. My teammates and I will go into more detail about each of these topics. First, we'll give you an introduction to our project and an overview on how the process works. Next, we'll describe the main pieces of equipment in our process and a little bit on how they operate. After that, we will highlight the main results that we found. To wrap it up, we'll finish with conclusions and optimizations, as well as describe some of the difficulties that we ran into during this project. At the end, we'll have a couple slides describing our sources and references used in order to write this report and make the assumptions that we did. This year has been significantly impacted by a global pandemic caused by SARS-CoV-2, also known as COVID-19 or coronavirus. The strain of the virus warns concerns due to its highly contagious nature, its ability to spread rapidly, and its capability to mutate. It is spread by respiratory droplets that are expelled during sneezing, coughing, breathing, etc. In most cases, the virus remains in the throat and will only cause typical cold and flu symptoms, but it can travel into the lungs and cause severe respiratory issues, which can lead to death. There have currently been over 2.9 million deaths and 98,000 businesses forced to close, putting the U.S. in a state of emergency, creating such a high demand for a vaccine. The pharmaceutical company Moderna has released their phase three clinical trial data, which has proven their vaccine to be 94.5% effective which is why we chose this company to base our scale-up process production on. The plan is creating a process that produces 600 million vaccines per year. Here's our block flow diagram. This graphic helps show a high-level version of what's going on in our vaccine production process. The process can be simplified into two major categories, the reaction slash creation of the mRNA in the bioreactor and the filtration steps that follow. It is vital that we extract as much mRNA as possible to efficiently produce the vaccines needed to meet the current demand. This is our process flow diagram. This figure, this figure goes into more detail of what our process looks like. We start the journey in the bioreactor where the DNA template goes to a reaction and the messenger RNA is created. We have a series of pumps to continue to push the mRNA along the process. We will go into more details of what the pieces of equipment do later on in this presentation. The next step is one of three different tangential flow filtrations that are in the process. After it goes into the ion exchange chromatography, which again is another filtration step. Next, it goes through the lipid nanoparticle encapsulation. This is where the mRNA gets put into a protective lipid, and this is what it will stay in until it's administered into the human body. Finally, there are also two sterile filtration steps along the process to ensure a final product is as pure as possible. There are five main pieces of equipment in the process. The first step in the process is the bioreactor, where the T7 polymerase and DNA reactions take place to form the correct mRNA strands that will allow your body to produce antibodies for the virus. The bioreactor also has a cooling jacket since the reaction is exothermic and must remain at a constant 37 degrees Celsius. Next, there is tangential flow filtration. This is a filtration step that removes unwanted components like excess reactants from the slurry based on their size. In the process, there are multiple tangential flow filtration and other filtration steps because the vaccine will need to be purified to 99.99% so it is safe to enter a human host. Another filtration step that is in the process is sterile filtration. This step sterilizes and filters the mRNA to produce a vaccine that is not contaminated. The last two main pieces of equipment are lipid nanoparticle encapsulation and ion exchange chromatography. The lipid nanoparticle encapsulation is an important step which makes sure the mRNA is stabilized so it won't degrade before entering a human host. With this step, the mRNA is sent into a tea mixer where lipids are encapsulated, where lipids encapsulate the mRNA. This step allows the mRNA to be stored for a period of time before entering a host where the encapsulated mRNA enters a cell membrane and with a pH change, the lipids release the mRNA allowing for production of antibodies. Ion exchange chromatography is another filtration step However, it is based off of charge. The gel in the column is charged from the mobile phase that is put into the column. This is a pH change that will also charge the unwanted slurry molecules. 
This step occurs after the first tangential flow filtration, so it removes any more unwanted components from the initial reaction. Now to discuss the major results for scaling up the COVID-19 vaccine production process. Mm -hmm. The team prioritized three major areas of focus for this process, which include the material balance, energy balance, and economics. First, we will start off with the material balance results. At the end of one vaccine production batch, the total number of vaccines produced was determined to be approximately 107,000 doses at 99.99% purity, with a process efficiency of 56%, and a batch process time of two days. One plant is capable of producing approximately 19.4 million doses annually, which means in order to meet our goal of 600 million doses per year, it would require 31 plants operating year round. Next, we will discuss the energy balance results. The total electrical energy required per batch is 3.3 times 10 to the eight kilojoules. To provide perspective, this is energetically equivalent to driving 5.3 cars annually in the US. In order to operate one plant on a year round basis, the energy required was found to be 5.97 times 10 to the 10 kilojoules, which translates to driving approximately uh, 955 cars year round. So in order to operate the 31 plants needed to make the 600 million vaccine doses per year, the total energy required would be equivalent to driving approximately 30,000 cars annually in the US. Our last area of focus is economics. The annual operation cost was found to be $6.7 billion and the annual sales were found to be $200 million, resulting in an annual gross earnings of minus $6.5 billion. Our team acknowledges that annual gross earnings result is significant, but also want to communicate lab scale materials were used due to the current lack of industrial scale resources due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. In summary, the results demonstrate we have successfully developed a vaccine production process capable of producing 600 million doses per year while minimizing energy consumption. Furthermore, our team is confident that the annual gross earnings can be positive with access to industrial scale raw materials in the future. In order to optimize our process, we can replace some of the equipment that we have. The 31 ion exchangers could be replaced with one industrial scale ion exchanger. This would save a significant amount of space within the plant, as well as the cost of purchase could be lowered. A single use tangential flow filtration reduces time, labor, and cost since it is unnecessary to clean it after every batch. Another way to optimize is by recycling the reactants in order to save on disposal costs. We are currently using Massachusetts average utility cost in order to find the cost to operate the machinery. To reduce this, it is recommended to make the utilities on site. Our largest expense in the process is the cost of the mRNA and other materials due to these components being sold on a lab scale. We could optimize this cost through the bulk purchase of the feedstock. All of the above recommendations would also cut down on the capital cost. A couple challenges that we ran into during this project is that we were unable to use some of last semester's work since we shifted our basis from the flu vaccine to an mRNA vaccine. With this came issues with finding information since this type of vaccine is so new. We were unable to use programs since biological materials like mRNA are not listed, and this led to most of the calculations having to be done by hand. As engineers, we adapted quickly to the emerging information and did not compromise the quality of the work we produced despite these challenges. Here are our supporting materials. We wanted to give a shout out of thanks to our design mentor, Daniel Diaz. And here are our references for our presentation. We want to say thank you again for your time and hope you enjoyed it.